You are watching William Patterson University Television. Coming up on today's episode of Career Path, we sit down with Tony Award winning producer Jim Kierstead. Stay with us. Hello and welcome to Career Path, the show that brings back alumni to share their success stories. I'm Dante Vacatoro, and today we bring back a Jim Kirstead, a 2011 WP graduate has, who has produced Broadway hits such as Kinky Boots, Pippin, Hades Town, and American Sun. Jim, thank you so much for coming back. Welcome back to campus. We'll talk about your work in theater in due time, but first let's start at the beginning. How did you end up at William Patterson? Oh, hey Dante, thanks so much for having me today. Um, well, I actually grew up in Wayne, New Jersey, so I was nearby, so I was aware of William Patterson from the time I went to high school, and I had an initial career um, study of uh, computer science. So I have a bachelor's and a master's degree in that. And I was working in an IT career for many years. And then about 12 years ago, I decided that I wanted to go back and pursue a master's in clinical and counseling psychology. So I was looking for some really good programs that were nearby and that were highly respected. And of course, I came around, um, came across William Patterson, which was in my own backyard. So I applied here, and, and the, rest is, the rest is history. Clinical and counseling psychology for a theater producer, how is that education translated into your professional life? Well, you know, my original career, uh, my original career is computer science. So it was that, and then it was uh, theater production, and then it was clinical and counseling psychology. So the interesting part to me is people always ask me, like, why would a computer science person do clinical and counseling psychology, they feel so different. But I don't, I don't think they are. I think there's like a creativeness about both of those fields. And even though they're manifested in different ways, I think it's an understanding, it's like an interest in understanding about what goes on, you know, either in a computer program or in a, peop in a person's brain in their life. And I was always somebody who really liked to listen to people and help them and whatnot. So it was always a dream of mine to go back and be able to be a licensed counselor. So. It doesn't necessarily have a direct translation, but it sort of does because what I learned in my psychology program here at William Patterson was that psychology is one of those fields that translates to everything you do. You know, it's like if you can understand people and have empathy for them and you know, just understand how to talk to them better, I think that that's a skill set that everybody can benefit from. That's great. You're, and you're talking about learning so many things from William Patterson. Talk to me about some of the people you met here and what they taught you just about life. Yeah, um, you know, I met a, certainly a number of great professors, including Kathy Torsney. I don't know that she works here anymore, but Dr. Diamond was amazing. And this amazing man um, named Dr. Nina, Michael Nina, and he was from the NYU program originally, and a lot of those folks kind of came back and forth to William Patterson. And I learned so much from them, you know, so far as how to translate um, us as individuals into counseling and that we can be free to sort of be ourselves in every facet of life. You know, that was a very important thing for me. But the best thing that I got out of my, my um, program was being with the people in the classes. You know, I was from this computer science background and I never would be that interactive with the people in class, right? You'd go to class with them and you'd go home and maybe you'd work on a project. But with this whole um, psychology program, we really got to be a family and got to learn a lot about each other. So I think that because we were learning together and we were in these classes together um, and got through this program together, we sort of helped each other along the way. So, so that was one of the most important resources I got. I'm still I, lifelong friends with a lot I of them. I think the amazing thing about your story is you had a production company before you decided to come back to school. Kirstead Productions started in 2004. You started here in 2006. What was it like balancing the pursuit of a degree with your actual day-to-day -day work? <laughs> well, I like to multitask, let's put it that way. So when I was going to school originally, um, I actually did a co-op job when I was going to, you know, for my computer science degree. So I started that at the end of my freshman year. So I ended up working full-time at my co-op after like about six months. They asked me on full-time. So I was working full-time, I was going to school full-time, then I went to graduate school the first time full-time while I was working full-time. So for me, it didn't really m mean that much. Like it wasn't that big of a deal for me to go back to graduate school again while I was working full-time. So it was just, you know, kind of figuring out your day, um, you know, figuring out how you can make all that work. So, you know, I was ready for that challenge. What I was think the biggest challenge of all of that? The biggest challenge was 
not letting anything slip. Because sometimes when you're doing a lot of work on different fields, you've got to be able to switch back and forth often. And you can also have a lot of scheduling nightmares, right? Because like if you're supposed to be in the office, and then you've got to be in school, and then you've got an internship, and then you're working on a production, you've got to really keep everything balanced and uh, scheduled well. So, you know, that's one of the things I've learned how to schedule very well in my life. I think that would benefit anybody, probably. Now, you previously graduated from NYU with a degree in computer science in the 90s, and then 10 years without schooling, and you come back to William Patterson. What's it like returning to school after a decade to try to pursue another degree? You feel very old, let me put it that way, yeah. So it was fun. So when I um, was originally in school, I was sort of like regular college age. So I graduated college when I was 21, and then I graduated from my master's program when I was 24. When I came back, I was 38. So I went into this group of students, right, and they were all just out of school. So they were probably like 21, 22 years old. And here I was, 38. So I felt really old for a while, and it took a little while to overcome that. But after we got to know each other, I think I was like their big brother. It was really fun. We would have parties and watch movies for our class and whatnot, and it was, it was pretty exciting. That's but great. that was my biggest thing, yeah. What were the most important lessons or memories you took away from your time here at William Patterson? Um, I learned that I think what you can do is if you want to make something happen, you can do it. And it's just a question of putting your mind to it, right? So like I could have, I talked to a lot of people when I went back to school again and they knew I was working full time and they knew I was doing the theater work. And they said, "How you'll never be able to do this. How could you possibly go back to school for this master's program and do a full time job and do this other stuff? And I said, well, because I want to do it, right? And I think if you want to do something, you can accomplish that. And I, I live my life that way. Um, so I think this was one more example of that. And a lot of what you learned here at William Patterson, you translate into your professional career, of course. Yeah, I think psychology is such an important career. You know, I think it's such an important lesson. I always tell my friends, you know, and their kids going to school, I'm always like, if you don't know what to do, there's a lot of people who grow up and they know exactly what they want to do, or they have, a, have an idea. But if they have no idea, I always say, you could kind of go into psychology, and I don't think you'll go wrong from that, because I think it does prepare you for any career you'd ever want to do in your life, you know, and it also helps you in your personal life as well. well great. Uh, we've got to take a short break, but coming up, we'll get advice on preparing for a career in production and what it's like to win a Tony Award. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Career Path. I'm Dante Vacatoro. We're here with WP alum and theater producer Jim Kierstead. Now, Jim, what drove you to produce, uh, pursue theater production as a career? Well, you know, it's funny. Um, I didn't really pursue theater production. It sort of pursued me. And what I mean by that is, as I said before, I grew up in this area, so we were very close to New York City. So as a kid, I'd go in with my family and see theater. So I always knew that I, I loved theater. It was one of my favorite things to do. But I never understood what it meant to produce a show. I didn't even know what a theater producer was. Um, I didn't know any theater producers. But all of a sudden, one day, um, I had some friends and they were working on a musical. They were writing a new musical. And they needed somebody to come in and just sort of help them with some logistics, um, you know, some business part of it, right? And that is my background. I'm a business person, but I also love theater. And when I did it, I kind of thought that was going to be the end of it. But it wasn't, it was really just the very beginning of it because all these opportunities kept presenting themselves going forward and I just sort of followed that trail of breadcrumbs and it got bigger and bigger and bigger and that's what it is. But business, you know, a theater producers really doing the business of theater. So it was a perfect fit for me being a fan and also a business person. Now for a student who's interested in pursuing production, what should he or she be doing in college to prepare them for the job market like that? I think that the best thing that somebody could do is if they really want to pursue producing or general management, you know, the interesting thing about theater is it's sort of a bit hidden, right? So unless you really look for it or unless you've got an opportunity for somebody to explain what is involved with theater production, you're not going to even be aware of it. So if somebody's got that inkling, I think that they should probably want to hang around a community theater or a theater in New York if they can, if they've got that access, as much as possible. Because as soon as you start understanding what's going on in the background, behind the scenes, you can start realizing what jobs are available in this, in this business. 
Let's focus on internships here. Uh, what elements of a production internship do students get as an advantage why, like as they're looking for a job? Yeah, I think that for me, I mean, this is more global of an answer too. I think an internship is the most valuable thing that any student could do. I think any student in college should absolutely do that and they should you know, make themselves do it. Um, you know, learning in school is one thing, but having an application for those skills is another. And that's something that employers look for. And it's something that helps you realize, like after you do an internship, you realize maybe I don't want to do this job that I thought I did. Or maybe there's something you learn that puts you in a different direction that's related to what you originally thought you wanted to do, but it's a little bit different. So I feel like an internship is always handy. I did that in my computer science degree, and I'm still working there 31 years later at this company. Um, and I did that, obviously, for my counseling, because that was a requirement. So I worked at a counseling center, and I learned that I actually loved doing counseling. I could have learned I didn't like it. I actually talked to people in my program, and they went for an internship, and they said, like, I don't think I actually want to be a counselor. This is not for me. Um, so I think it's a super valuable thing, and it gives you something extra to put on your resume, and it, it gives you something to be armed with when you go out for job interviews. Now, you've spearheaded plays from New York City to London and beyond. What kinds of challenges arise from starting work on different plays day after day, year after year? <laughs> um, okay, so plays and projects and whatnot, they're sort of like, like dating in a way, right? So in the beginning, it sounds really good, and then you go on the date and you realize like, oh, I see the problems. You start to make the list, you're like, all right, I like this, but I don't like this. So you have to sort of figure out how to navigate that. And you know, if A, you figure out if you wanna continue dating this project, or, and if you do, you have to sort of figure out how to make all those parts come together. So I think it's really getting to know the piece that's the most important part of it. Um, and that's to me the biggest challenge. And once you know what it is, once you know what you're doing, then you say like, I know what to do. I can, I can figure this out. For students ready to enter the in industry, what advice would you have to deal with the challenges from day to day? Um, you know, again, I think this is really transferable skills, you know, whether it's theater or whether it's any other career that somebody's working on. I think that if you could communicate with people, right, I think you have to be, I think you have to know what you want to do. I think you have to be kind and you have to be respectful of people and you have to allow people to do their jobs. Um, but I think that, you know, you have to be direct and have a goal and make sure you're always fulfilling that goal. And if you can do that, I think that that's something that you would do with any, with any career you're going to work on, any project. Lastly, three Tony Awards. Is there any better feeling than getting your play's name called? It was pretty great. Um, then in 2013, it probably will go down as the one of the happiest moments of my life because we won the Tony for Pippin for best, best revival of a musical, and then literally like five minutes later, we won the Tony for Kinky Boots for best musical that Amazing. year, and it was crazy. It was a really really fun time. Yeah, so it was special. That's that's incredible. <laughs> that's incredible. That's all the time though that we have for WP Career Path. All of us at William Patterson would like to thank you, Jim Kirsted, for coming and sharing your invaluable knowledge and insight with us. Thank you for having uh, me. Be sure to keep with us on social media. Follow the WPCOM department on Twitter and Instagram, and use the hashtag WPCOM to keep yourself updated with all the COM department's happenings. For everyone at Career Path, I'm Dante Vacatoro. Thanks for watching.